Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. It is the first Thursday of the month, which means it is recipe time. This time of year, it's fitting that we offer recipes that use Vermont apples. So Chef Marco has been working on an apple dessert that you'll see in just a moment. But before we get to dessert, let's see what Marco is cooking up for a fall meal. Hi, I'm Marco Yala, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. Fall is in the air, the temperatures are dropping down, the leaves are changing, and just like seasons change, also our diet changes throughout the year. Right now we're craving all those things that are maybe a little heartier, like potatoes, and my favorite are that those little potatoes that cook so well. So, wanting to use some of those, I found this recipe that really says Vermont, and it is for a maple balsamic pork tenderloin with baby potatoes. Very easy to make and of course it uses our very star ingredient here in Vermont which is maple, one of my favorite things. So let me tell you how I put this together. First you're going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Then you're going to take one and a half pounds baby red or gold potatoes and you're going to cut them in half. Then you're going to transfer them to a bowl Sprinkle them with three tablespoons olive oil. Then you're gonna season them with salt and pepper. But that's not it, because we want these potatoes to be really flavorful. So let's add some more seasonings. You're gonna sprinkle your potatoes with half a teaspoon Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon garlic powder, and one third cup grated Parmesan cheese. And mix them well until all the potatoes are coated. It's time to work on our tenderloin. However, Pork can be very complicated to bake, especially because it can get very dry very fast. So we're going to add a lot of ingredients that are going to add moisture into our meat. To a bowl, you're going to add 3 quarter cup Vermont maple syrup. Then to the maple syrup, add 2 tablespoons soy sauce, 2 tablespoons balsamic vinegar, 2 teaspoons garlic, and 1 quarter teaspoon crushed red pepper flakes. You can also add one quarter teaspoon smoked paprika to give this recipe a little more depth. And now that you have your marinade ready, it's time to get it in the oven. You're gonna measure twice the length of a large cookie sheet with aluminum foil. You're gonna fold it in half and raise the edges to construct a little boat. Then you're gonna take a two pound pork tenderloin and you're gonna poke holes into it. You are now going to transfer the pork tenderloin into the boat and pour the marinade over it. Arrange your baby potatoes on the side and it's ready to go in the oven. And you're gonna bake your pork tenderloin for 20 to 25 minutes. However, you also want to make sure to turn it. So use tongs or baste it every five to 10 minutes so it's nicely moist everywhere. And it's very important that you check that your meat cooked all the way through because you don't want to serve undercooked pork. So just make sure to slice it. And if it's still pink, then move your, your boat to a different cookie sheet and put it back in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes. And it's important also that you don't discard the marinade because then when you're serving it, you're gonna be using that as juice to moisten your pork. So I really hope you give this recipe a try because it features some of our Vermont veggies and of course, Vermont maple, which is, you know, our little star here. So let us know how you like it. Okay, and now it's time for dessert. And I know that a lot of you out there love pumpkin spice. However, my favorite thing about Vermont in the fall is apples. So I decided to make a crisp, but this is no ordinary crisp. It has a little twist in there. So let me tell you how I put this together. First, you're gonna peel and thinly slice three to four large Granny Smith apples. 
Granny Smith and Macintosh are the preferred baked apples because they're tart and they retain their shape. Transfer your apples into a bowl and you're gonna add one tablespoon lemon juice to prevent them from over browning. Then you're gonna add two tablespoons all-purpose flour, one quarter cup sugar, half a teaspoon ground cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon nutmeg, half a teaspoon vanilla extract, and give it a good toss. Now remember that I told you that this apple crisp has a little bit of a twist? Well, you're gonna add half a teaspoon orange zest, half a teaspoon lemon zest, and two tablespoons orange juice. Finally, you're gonna add two tablespoons melted butter. And I personally think that the most important part of a crisp is the topping. So let me tell you how to get this topping really nice, crumbly, and crispy. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. To a bowl, you're gonna add two third cup old-fashioned rolled oats, half a cup all-purpose flour, half a cup light brown sugar, half a teaspoon ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon baking powder, and half a cup butter cut into small pieces. Then, with your fingers, you're gonna mix it into a dough. Once it's nice and crumbly, you're gonna sprinkle it over your apple mixture. And then you're gonna bake it for about 35 minutes or until it's golden brown. So I hope you enjoy this new twist on an old favorite. And let's take a little piece out of this pan so you can see it. It looks wonderful. Look at those apples. They're nice and cooked. And I gotta tell you, it smells delicious. And I really hope you give this recipe a try because who knows, they may become your new go-to recipe and your new favorites because they're delicious, they're easy to make, and they have all those elements that we love from Vermont. And as I always say, remember to follow across the fence of social media. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest content delivered right to your inbox or your phone. And from my kitchen to your kitchen, happy cooking, happy fall, and remember to visit your local apple orchard, remember to get your maple locally, and support all of our farmers. Mm. Thank you, Marco. I miss you in the studio. And a reminder that you can find more than a decade of Across the Fence recipes by visiting our website and clicking on the link to recipes. Our next segment today is about a young Vermonter who just won a world championship. 20-year-old Gabriel Getz of Thetford is pictured here atop the winner's podium at the World Obstacle Course Racing Competition held last month at Stratton Mountain. He won his championship in the 18 to 25-year-old age group. We first met Gabriel on Across the Fence two years ago. And as we extend our congratulations, we look back on a story that hints at where Gabriel gets his dedication and resilience. As a senior at Thetford Academy, Gabriel Gates fits in with the other young men and women training for the spring sports season. With one exception, his dad serves in the military. Just about everything I can remember is him in the military, the first day I was dropped off at kindergarten, my dad was in full uniform and went up to Burlington as soon as he dropped me off and flew to Tucson, Arizona to do Border Patrol in 2006. It's just been a, a part of everything. Gabe's dad, Sergeant Joshua Gates, served on two year-long overseas deployments, which meant Gabe had to confront some big issues when he was young. It kind of forces you to grow up and forces you to look at things like, um, yeah, he's at work, but work could lead to something bad and that he could not come back. You have to think about things from an age that's younger than most that understand the concept of those things. Then and now, most of Gabe's friends don't understand what it's like to have a parent who serves in the military. When you're talking to your friend, you're like, yeah, my dad's gone. And they'll be like, yeah, my dad's gone too. He, my parents divorced. So I see him every other weekend, something like that. But it's not the same at all, obviously. Vermont is one of eight U.S. states, territories, and districts without a military base. For the approximately 2,300 military dependents living in Vermont, that can feel isolating. The Vermont National Guard Family Readiness Center at Camp Johnson in Colchester helps combat that isolation. 
Volunteerism is super important to, mm -hmm. to us as a population. Brian Stoudnauer is the important. lead child and youth program coordinator yeah, the with the Vermont yeah. National Guard. Their mom or dad signed up for the military. They did not. And so they were brought into this world being, being military dependent. And the challenges and struggles that they go through as an individual are going to be more than a typical teenager, than a typical youth. And so it's super important to have programs and services for them to support them in their times of need. Try Northwest. Stoudenauer runs camps during school vacations and in the summer, like this drone camp that was held in partnership with UVM Extension 4-H. These events build lifelong friendships for these kids. They have a network of peers, actual military youth peers, um, that they connect to. And it's really great because we bring these kiddos back around school vacation times, around school breaks. We do periodic weekend programming as well. And when these kiddos come back together, it's amazing to see them just get right back into it. Just sets them all at ease and allows them to talk about the issues that are present for them being in military dependent youth. Gabe serves on the Vermont National Guard Teen Council, which helps Stoudenauer plan the camps and events for the Child Youth Program. As a veteran of this program, he appreciates what is done for him, his family, and other military families in Vermont. Almost always when I'm at these programs, I'm with one of the friends that I've known for probably 10 years now. And we're still friends and we talk and we hang out outside of camps and uh, Child Youth Program programs. And it's a big help and it sounds kind of cheesy, like, oh, find somebody to talk about it with, but it definitely does help. And those connections, even if you're not necessarily talking about your parent being deployed, you can look at each other and be like, yeah, man, it sucks, but it's okay. Set, go. Gates' experience of taking on a leadership role in the Guard's child and youth programs echoes the service by another member of the Gates family. It's just hap where I happen to end up and it's hard at times, but it's, it's just a, someone needs to do it, and my dad happens to be the one that raised his hand. Standing out by standing up. That's the life of a military kid. In Thetford, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Once again, our congratulations to Gabe for his success in the Obstacle Course Racing World Championships. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.